the PE Geek podcast. This has definitely been a long time coming and it's certainly something that I've toyed around with a lot in recent years, bringing a podcast um, to the audience and, and sort of working to extend what happens on the blog and what happens through the mobile apps, etc., cetera, um, in a way that complements it and enhances the blog's message. And I've sort of been inspired recently by quite a number of podcasts that I myself also listen to. So um, there's a couple of podcasts that I, I regularly tune into on the daily drive, um, and they've sort of been very inspirational in, in making me think about the whole podcasting journey again and sort of getting back into it and sort of building some more value for you guys, the listeners. So um, for those of you that aren't aware, I'm actually now commuting over two hours a day. Um, I get up and, and the first thing I sort of do is hop in the car, connect my phone um, to my car stereo and off I go listening to a podcast or listening to an audio book and it's actually something that I really look forward to that that first sort of hour of the day um, tuned into to really good content. So this podcast is definitely trying to replicate the things that I um, enjoy about podcasting, that the fact that they're useful, they're engaging, they're entertaining and um, that you can really get something out of them that is actionable. So I'm going to keep them short. I'm going to keep them succinct. Um, I'm going to keep them as full of ideas as possible. And from time to time, um, we're going to interview other people who are doing interesting things in the world of physical education and technology. Um, We'll also have giveaways and prizes and and ways that you can sort of um, continue the journey once the the podcast episode is finished. So, you know, without further ado, we'll, we'll launch into our, um, our first episode and I really do hope you enjoy it. At any stage, you can view the episode notes um, for a podcast by visiting thepeergeek.com slash episode one. And on that particular page, you're going to find all the things that we talk about for that particular episode and um, we'll be able to even see a transcript of the show in case um, you're unable to listen. So let's get into it. Now, if you've been following myself on social media in the last month or you've actually been following the blog, you'll be aware of a product that um, I've recently purchased called the Fitbit Flex, which has, I must say, changed the way that I actually operate Um, and engage in physical activity. Now, it's a really, really small, compact activity tracking device. And quite essentially, um, the amount of data that you can gather from it is is really, really extraordinary. So what it is, it looks just like one of those um, basically wristbands that were really popular a few years ago. You know, you think back to Lance Armstrong and the, the Livestrong bracelets that were around. You know, it somewhat looks like that, just a little bit, little bit chunkier. And um, basically, you wear it, and inside of it, it has a tiny little accelerometer. And the accelerometer basically measures any sort of movement that happens on an X, Y, and Z plane. It's known as a triaxial accelerometer. And what that does is it translates that movement into... Um, activity. So, you know, it has a little algorithm in there that tracks any sort of movement that is consistent with um, the walking accelerations that we have. So by wearing the device, you can very easily get an an understanding of the amount of steps that you've taken um, per day. It even is sufficiently um, capable to determine um, the intensities for which you're operating at. And you look at your, your graph at any given stage and you can see the amount of time that you spent being physically active, those periods of time um, when they occurred. And you can even get a bit of a pie chart representation of, um, you know, how much sedentary time you had compared with physical activity and very physical activity um, intensive um, moments. So it is really extraordinary. Now, in order for it to work, um, well, it has been designed to work with iPhone and, and iPad devices, Um, from iPhone 4S and iPad 3 up. However, that's not essential. It is the easiest tool um, to use it with. But simply, once once you get the device, um, and they're around about the $100 mark, 
Um, you can purchase them in you know a wide variety of places. Um, I grab mine at Amazon, and you can do that by going to the peergeek.com slash fitbitflex. Visit that link, and it will take you to the um, the store where I purchased my own Fitbit. And once you've purchased it, you, you have to connect it with a Fitbit account, which is free. And um, you log in via the Fitbit app and it guides you through the process to connect your band or your bracelet with your um, mobile device. And it uses the Bluetooth connection of that device to um, basically sync all your activity data. So you don't need to have your phone with you all the time, just when you want to look at your current data Um, You open up the app, look at it, and you can see how many steps um, you have accrued across the course of the day. It's really, really powerful. Um, As you know, know, the ideal amount of steps to take per day is 10,000 steps. Um, And I'm trying to get that every single day. And and most of the time, that is absolutely um, something that I can do quite easily. And in fact, you know, I get into the 15 up to 20,000 steps on a normal day's work. But the thing that really interests me is is the breakdown of sedentary time, um, and you know, obviously that I'm driving two hours a day, um, that's pretty sedentary. So seeing that and then being aware of the fact that I need to look for opportunities to be more active when I do get home from work um, has been pretty extraordinary. So wearing it has definitely, I, I will say, changed the way that I approach a lot about my own personal health. Um, it's really an, you know, not very invasive at all. It looks pretty cool. And the amount of data you can get from it is pretty extraordinary. But it doesn't just stop there at physical activity. You can um, wear it and sleep. And it will actually use the same accelerometer um, to track your sleep cycles. And, and the basic premise is when you're engaged in that deep sleep, um, this restorative sleep that we, you know, we also chase, there is not a lot of movement. In fact, you know, um, there is no movement at all. So when the device senses movement, it obviously correlates it with you not being in a deep sleep phase. And the more of those sort of movement counts you get throughout the course of the night, the less uh, qualitative or less quality your sleep actually is. So waking up in the morning and seeing a breakdown of how many hours you slept, um, the total time that it took you to get to sleep and the amount of times that you technically emerge from that deep sleep phase and into a bit of a lighter sleep phase is really interesting. And um, the whole idea is to try and find patterns and ways in which that you can improve that sleep phase. And, and for me, it has been completion of exercise in the after hours. So, you know, if I can, if I do something um, that involves exercise before I go to bed, then I tend to have these much longer um, deep sleep moments and, and then feel more refreshed when I wake up. So it's really awesome. Um, the best feature probably about the whole Fitbit Flex is is the community that it allows you to produce. So uh, at the moment, I'm paired up with quite a few other PA geeks um, online and we're competing for the, the most steps per day. And all we can see is the amount of steps that each of us has accumulated across the course of seven days. And currently, I don't think I think I'm in about fourth place at the moment. There's there's quite a few people being really active, and um, and this competitive nature is actually driving all of us to increase our own step count. So, what I'm saying, go and grab a Fitbit Flex, um, the slash Fitbit Flex. Grab one, and then come join us in our competition and see how that improves the motivation for you to be physically active in a classroom based setting. I can absolutely see these being used um, with PE students. You know, imagine if every student had one of these devices and, you know, they were able to use it to track the physical activity that they had in your PE class and they could see that they were getting 45 minutes of, you know, very active PE, um, you know, intensity-wise and they were able to make a really big understanding about, well, how sedentary their lifestyle is when they get home, if they're sitting in front of a video game, etc. And all of this data could be used to make some serious improvements to their overall health. Um, I know for us personally, in, in the senior physical education program, we actually have a big area of study that is about, well, how do we measure physical activity? And um, one of the ways is, is via an accelerometer, and the kids learn about them 
but they've never had the chance to actually experiment with them. But the Fitbit Flex is a commercially available accelerometer um, that does exactly what we, you know, sort of hope to achieve through learning that particular part of the course. So when we move into that aspect next year, I can absolutely see our students using them, um, gathering data, and then being able to do their assessments based on themselves rather than, you know, textbook examples from a university. So yeah, awesome, really, really powerful tool. And, you know, come and join us. Let's see if you can um, knock off the people who are sitting on top at the moment. And, you know, just imagine the other ways that it could be used in a physical education classroom, Um, maybe to engage people that aren't so engaged in the physical education process normally, um, provide some quantitative data about their actual activity. Imagine saying to a parent, you know, Tim, little Timmy, he actually only spent 33% of his time engaged in physical activity that's deemed enough at a higher high enough level for health. Um, you know, you're starting to get some really powerful data that we can use to um, improve behavior. Now, it's that time in the show where I share with you three ideas um, for your PE classroom. Now, these ideas are just going to be things that I have either been doing myself recently or thinking of doing um, or have seen in action and um, hopefully they're things that you can take away and use straight away. So the first, the first thing that I've been um, very eager to share with the group uh, and the people in the blog is fitnessblender.com. Now, it's not necessarily a new service. It's been around for quite some time. It is a YouTube channel, and it's been set up by um, two people that basically go to work to produce a series of high-quality Um, sort of workout style fitness type um, videos and if you visit fitnessblender.com you'll actually see um, them in action you know there's there's over over a hundred videos of all sorts of different things like pilates and yoga and cardio workouts and um, high intensity training activities and essentially press play on the video they take you through all the workouts they show you what um you know, how to do it in much better instructional and um, sound ways than I myself personally would. You know, I don't know about you, but my yoga skills aren't very crash hot. So I'm very, very happy to outsource that particular aspect of my teaching to people who are much more skilled in that area. So Fitness Blender definitely ticks those boxes, you know, press play. You can even join in. Um, in the activity, it means that you know the students are able to see someone who's engaging in the activity, um, and I think that's pretty powerful. Um, but for me, I've been using it with our younger year five, six, seven students, um, and utilizing them in the first part of the lesson, um, sort of like little warm ups, and having the kids work through them and engage in the activity. You know, they only go for like less than ten minutes, most of them. And it's a, they, they work to definitely, you know, reach the goal of the video. And it's certainly something that um, is free, is readily accessible, and I highly, highly value. The second thing I want to share with you is an app that I blogged about recently in my last top apps for PE teachers um, blog post. I think it was um, number 27. The app is called Teemo, spelled T-E-E-M-O, and you can... Um, you can find that on the App Store. It's it's actually technically only an iPhone app, but um, like all iPhone apps, you can you can play it and use it on the iPad, um, but it just obviously is not full screen. This app is brilliant, and it actually is very much testament to the whole gamification process that we're starting to see happen. Um, you know, things things that basically are being changed to become more like a game. Um, and you know the whole idea being that games are very rewarding. They inspire students. They encourage people to continue to develop their skills and so on. Um, you know, just think about any game you've ever played and how addictive they are. Um, these qualities are starting to find themselves in educational material and in training activities, and in um, sort of in in all sorts of manners of life. And they seek to sort of change behavior, and they do in a really powerful way. So this Timo app is definitely based around that idea. Um, basically what you do is 
you, you launch the app and you're, you are asked to join a challenge and um, the challenge that we chose to use is our class um, was to climb Everest. And inside of the app, you basically tap that challenge and you start off at um, just below base camp on this, you know, um, Mount Everest um, animations, uh, you know, as you like. And you basically pick the level of intensity that you would like to work at. So for our students, they were, you know, quite young. We chose to do the easy, um, easy activities but you know, there's right up to much more complex activities that you can do. And basically it takes you through a series of activities and um, it uses does all the timings for them. And in the very first instance, um, our students had to do step-ups, um, 20 seconds of step-ups followed by 10 seconds of rest and they had to repeat that three times. Once they had done that, um, we tapped the button that says, okay, completed. And you see your little marker move from where you were on the map and it gets a little bit further up um, on its way to base camp. And all up, we did 10 different activities and then we finished at base camp. So, you know, we had the kids doing all sorts of things. And the fact that, you know, we weren't just doing the activities and getting nothing from it, you know, the kids were actually going and engaged in the story and thinking, wow, you know, look where we are on the map. We're almost at, almost at base camp. I think two more, two more activities and, and we'll finally be there. Um, it was incredible. And, you know, the fact that that's just one of the challenges that you can do inside of the app, climbing Mount Everest, it's definitely going to keep us busy for quite some time. Um, and then we'll jump onto a new challenge and um, we'll progress. So go and check it out. It's called Teemo. You can um, you can grab it by going to thepeergeek.com slash climb Everest. That's thepeergeek.com slash climb Everest. It'll take you to the app store where you can grab the app. And I highly recommend it, even if it was only just for your own personal training. Um, you know, and this, this little gamified approach is actually encouraging you to do the activities that you've you know, decided that you would like to do. Then brilliant. Um, you know, games are enjoyable. And if you can mix that whole approach with exercise, then even better. So check it out with your students. Um, you know, we basically just connected our iPad to um, a projector and worked through it together. So one iPad, one projector, all of us working through the activities together and progressing as a class, as a warm up. And the, f the third and final idea that I want to share with you is 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 actually again it's not a new app but i think it's something that has gone under the radar a little bit it's called fit freeway and and this app is a motion tracking application that has been designed um, to work in conjunction with an exercise bike or a treadmill or an ergometer uh, etc and what you do is you basically let's say you're sitting at your exercise bike and um, you place the iPad in the armrests so that the iPad screen is looking at you. And you start the, the app. Uh, it's only available for iPhone and iPad. And what it does is it uses the front-facing camera to detect any movement that occurs um, you know, to yourself as you ride. So when you start riding, it senses the movement and drives this car through this really fast-paced um, city. And then you stop pedaling and sure enough, the app detects that you've stopped moving and the car stops. So obviously the faster you go, the faster the car goes and you are racing for the fastest possible time through this city and you've got to dodge in and out of traffic and you do that by just sort of tilting your head left and right. And you've basically turned something that is static like an exercise bike or a treadmill experience into something that is a little bit gamified again. So, you know, you've gone and made a very static experience um, a little bit more interesting. And uh, if you're looking at, again, using it for a warm up or looking at it from the perspective of, you know, a variety of different methods, um, you know, training approaches, etc., in PE, then um, that whole gamified approach definitely works to make this all the more enjoyable. So go and check it out. There is a free version of it which works perfectly fine but there's also the the paid version for a dollar 99 which just gives you a few more features and maps and so on um, it's definitely worth checking out a lot of fun 
So that pretty much brings us to the end of our first episode of this podcast. As I mentioned earlier, you can you can get the notes for this particular episode at thepeergeek.com slash episode one. Um, as I mentioned, all the links to the apps we mentioned, any of the products that we um, reviewed, and anything else that we spoke about will feature inside of that particular um, section for you to check out. Um, just before we go, I'm very, very keen to share one particular person every single episode that I think people need to be um, following the work of. And in this particular instance, um, the person I think you need to be following if you are not already is Ashley Mills. And and she is a, a, a PE teacher that works in Melbourne, uh, Australia. Um, I have met her before and have been very impressed by the work that she's done in such a short time. Um, in the PE classroom, you know, she's only a recent graduate herself. And um, yeah, very, very impressed by what she's doing with technology, using it in a way that is definitely benefiting the students and benefiting um, the school. So go and check her out. She's Ashley Mills on Twitter. And her website is healthybodies-happyminds.com. That's healthybodies-happyminds.com. Um, she's very eager to share, very, very eager to learn, um, and it's certainly someone that has, yeah, has been doing lots of stuff um, in, in, you know, in the PE world to, um, to, you know, to benefit everyone. So go and check her out, and um, I look forward to sharing with, with you future people and, and getting some of these people online um, to, in the podcast episodes in the future, um, but that's brings us to the end of the first episode and I look forward to to seeing you again in episode two. See you later.